Derby Wars, racing's biggest contest site is now even bigger with more than 200 games every day. Check out Survivor, Derby Wars' hottest new game. It's fun, easy to play, and for just four bucks, you could win a grand. Just pick a horse to finish first, second, or third and advance to the next race. With daily payouts and games starting every hour, you'll see why fans are racing to play Survivor. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the extra special pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I'm great, Brian. The Pegasus field is complete. There's $12 million waiting. $12 million waiting, 12 horses. We believe it's complete. We're going with it. I've made a morning line, Horse Racing Nation morning line for this race, an early one. And hopefully there will be no more changes. Hopefully all of these horses will run. There's no gun runner, of course, stuck in New Orleans. So we're left with the big two and the other 10, Matt. Let's go over the morning line real quick. To no one's surprise, I have California Chrome and Arrogate all alone. Matt, I have them at six to five on Chrome, seven to five on Arrogate. Do I have the right favorite? That's a good question, Brian, but I'm going to say yes. I think overall, uh, with as many California Chrome fans as there are, I think that Chrome will go off the favorite just, just barely. Yes. I, as you can tell by the morning line, I agree, Matt. I think Chrome gets the, gets the nod as the favorite. Despite the, despite the Breeders' Cup Classic result, Chrome has a fan base that uh, is pretty big, although Arrogate might have some betters that are pretty large as well. Matt, the third choice is the same horse that ran third in the Breeders' Cup Classic. I've tabbed Keen Ice as the third choice, but we have to go all the way down to 15 to 1. And then Shaman Ghost, who is my personal third pick in here, 20 to 1, followed by Neolithic, who's also 20 to 1. Matt, I'm putting uh, I'm putting a little bit of uh, extra love on the uh, tote board to Neolithic coming off that big allowance score. Yeah, Brian, and you know the the, the thing about your morning line, and I think it shows it really well. Uh, I think I prefer to look at this field a little bit more carefully than just saying it it's California Chrome and Arrogate, and then the rest of them. I think it's fair to say it's California Chrome, it's Arrogate. Then there's three other horses that have won grade one races, Brian. Yeah, it, it, fair they're enough, here. Matt. It, there, there's some decent horses in here. And and maybe, you know, maybe we should be looking at it another way, like you're alluding to here. And that is California Chrome and Arrogate are pretty special horses. Uh, and therein lies the big separation. Now, I'm not saying the other 10 are world beaters. It's not the greatest field in the world after you get by the top two. But kudos to the Pegasus World Cup for trying this, doing this unique race in the first place, but also for bringing together the rematch. that We, we wouldn't be seeing another California Chrome Arrogate matchup if this was just last year. Yeah, no doubt about that, Brian. And, you know, the, if it, looking at the field in more detail, you know, it, it's not that different from other grade ones where, where you got a few horses that are standouts and then you got some horses that are running in a grade one, taking a shot and probably don't have much of a chance. And, and that's certainly the case here, except in this case, you got the two best horses in the country. And I think it's leading to some people to, to disparage on the rest of the horses quite a bit. Yeah, the two best dirt horses in the world for sure are here, California Chrome and Arrogate. I do think that there's a gigantic I'm not going to understate this chasm between the one and two and say the 11 and the 12 in here on my morning line. And, and you'll see that as we go down the morning line, Matt. But yeah, the rest of the field is representative at least. And they deserve a shot at third or who knows even better in a $12 million race, a grade one race. Okay, so after Neolithic at 20 to one, we went down to Noble Bird, who's won a lot of stakes freewheeling on the front and adds a dimension to this race that uh, probably is welcomed by some. 25 to one, Breaking Lucky, who uh, has basically been uh, 
undervalued by a lot. Uh, he, he does throw in some less than stellar races, but on the other hand, he's a uh, he won one of the Triple Crown races in Canada two years ago. He ran very big races in the Clark and the Woodward. I have him at 25 to 1. He's running for the Reeves group, which includes uh, Terry Finley from West Point Thoroughbreds. The Argentine wonder horse, Matt Aragon, I have as the, what is that, the eighth choice. He's at 33 to 1. Is he possibly a monkey wrench in these works? I don't think so, Brian. And and continuing with my discussion, you know, I think the, that first bunch of horses are respectable horses. But once you get down below Breaking Lucky, Aragon, War Story, Rallis, Prayer for Relief, War Envoy, the, they are definitely outsiders. Uh, I think they're outsiders to even finish third. Fair enough, Matt. Aragon, I like a little bit better. I think he's looked good since he's been to Florida. And I think uh, people don't realize how good the racing in South America, not most notably Argentina, where this horse comes from. So for him to be a multiple grade one winner, probably getting better as he's gotten older, too. I think Aragon is, uh, is a horse that interests me a little bit. And I could see him running a very good race to hit the board. After Aragon, you mentioned we're getting into some longer shots now. And here's another horse I like, Matt. War Story. I have War Story at 50 to 1, which I think is fair. He's coming off a very nice win in the Queens County. But of course, he has failed several attempts against the top notch horses. Seems like a horse better suited for grade two, grade three races. But here he is again for Luch, the Luch group, the Luch stables. Uh, good luck to them. Raylis, uh, who showed a little bit of life again last year on the turf. Way back, one, uh, way back when he was a hopeful winner a few years ago. And he hasn't won since that hopeful. Uh, ran a good Del Mar Derby, but I have him at 75 to 1 coming out of the Breeders' Cup turf. Prayer for relief, prayer for class relief. Why is he in this race? The, the poor old man, prayer for relief, I have at 99 to 1. And that, folks, is, uh, I'm not trying to insult the horses. These are just the odds, uh, as close as I can say will be uh, come true uh, post time on uh, Saturday, January 28th. And finally, War Envoy. I don't have anything higher on my tote board than 99 to 1. So War Envoy is going to be 99 to 1. Matt, let's go down the list a little bit. First off, I want you to start with your top pick for the Pegasus World Cup. We're 10 days out, Matt. Who do you like? Well, Brian, I think I'm going to surprise the fans here. I think I think you and I might surprise the, surprise the fans. You're only going to surprise me, Matt, if you pick somebody other than California Chrome or Arrogate. Well, you want to know something, Brian? I actually thought about it for a little bit last night. I said to myself, is it possible? Could one of the other horses upset the top two? And, and then I smacked myself in both cheeks and, and decided to stop thinking that way. Um, Brian, my top pick is Arrogate. That may surprise the fans. I've been a California Chrome fan all along. I'm going with Arrogate. I don't think that the mile and eighth is going to be an issue for Arrogate. If you think back to the way he ran in the Travers, the speed that he showed in the Travers all the way around the track, I think Arrogate is got everything he needs in here. I love California mm -hmm. Chrome, but... If I have to pick one of them, I'm picking Arrogate. All right, Matt's on the second choice, Arrogate, and I think that's an interesting pick, Matt. Maybe a brave pick, although it is the horse that won the Breeders' Cup Classic. Now, we're talking about two really, really good horses. We know about California Chrome. He's improved. He's gone from a very nice two-year-old, impressive late in the year of his two-year-old season, a Kentucky Derby, a Preakness, a dual uh, triple crown winner, California Chrome, a horse of the year as a three-year-old. He lost much of last year, but he started out promising last year. Uh, I'm sorry, two years ago as a four-year-old, five years old, California Chrome had an absolutely fantastic year. And I'm including his only loss, the Breeders' Cup Classic, as an, a fantastic performance. Arrogate has done absolutely nothing wrong. He's won five in a row. He, he got beaten his first race of his life. He just keeps moving forward. So I, I think, that, and as close as the Breeders' Cup Classic is, I think there's something where you have to find uh, just a little something that may swing 
the advantage one way or the other. And, and I think that advantage or advantages are going to swing to California Chrome. So I am on the favorite this time. I think California Chrome is the horse to beat in here. And there's a couple of reasons. We know California Chrome can ship. He's shipped all over the world, literally. He's done it well. Arrogate's done a little bit of that. But with his inexperience, Gulfstream, a new track for both of them, I think there's a chance that California Chrome could like the conditions there a little bit better. And I keep coming back to the distance. I think Arrogate is a wonderful horse. And wonderful horses, great horses, can win at any distance. However, in this matchup, the two top horses in the world, probably at least on dirt, I think the advantage swings to Arrogate when they go longer. And I think this, the advantage swings to California Chrome when they go shorter. Nine furlongs at Gulfstream, I consider a very short route. And I think advantage California Chrome. Any other reasons you like Arrogate best? And, and you know, and Brian, I've heard you with, uh, with that argument with California Chrome. And I know that the uh, Arrogate's two biggest wins have been going 10 furlongs, and I know Arrogate beat California Chrome going uh, 10 furlongs, but California Chrome has been successful at 10 furlongs also, Brian. I think he won the Kentucky Derby. Um, that's at 10 furlongs. So I, I, I'm a little less prone to give California Chrome the excuse of being defeated by Arrogate in the Classic because it was 10 furlongs. I kind of feel maybe at this point that Arrogate is a better horse, and I'm just picking the better horse. Fair enough. I thought you might match, mention the jockeys of Mike Smith and Victor Espinosa. Let me, let me clarify, too, since you mentioned that Chrome is a good 10 furlong horse. I believe that. I believe that Arrogate is a really good horse at 7 furlongs. I believe that California Chrome is a really good horse at 12 furlongs. But if we're talking, if we're splitting hairs here, trying to pick between the two, I think the advantage goes one way to uh, when they run longer and another way uh, another way when they run shorter. Nine furlongs Gulfstream Park, I like Chrome a little bit better. Um, and I think Victor is not going to make the same mistake. Now, in the Breeders' Cup Classic, of course, a mile three sixteenths, who is the leader? It was still California Chrome. Take that for what it's worth. I mean, Arrogate may have moved after him quicker or he would have moved after him quicker. But I'm not sure that he would have won the Breeders' Cup Classic at nine furlongs. And now going to a foreign track to Arrogate, Gulfstream Park, I think it might be a little tougher. Matt, we got some speed in here. Your old friend Noble Bird is likely the speed of the speed. So it becomes an interesting chess match between the top two and several others. I think there's a few ralliers in here that are happy to see Noble Bird in the field. Yeah, I, uh, and Noble Bird is Noble Bird, and you never know what he's going to come up with. And Mark Cassie, his trainer, said the same thing, that when Noble Bird is good, he's very good. But when Noble Bird is bad, he's horrible. Um, if the good Noble Bird breaks out of the gate, gets to the lead, we're going to have a horse that's going to set some very, very, very honest fractions, which, like you said, Brian – is going to mean a lot to a lot of the riders in here. It's going to mean that uh, Espinoza and Mike Smith are going to have to be on their toes and, and deal with Noble Bird because he's not a horse that's just going to quit if he's running his A game. So they're not only going to be dealing with each other, they're going to have to deal with the pace and all of those things. Noble Bird makes it an interesting race. Neolithic also is a forwardly placed horse who loves Gulfstream Park. Maybe not as fast as Noble Bird if he's on his game. Um, talking about all that and going back to my Arrogate pick, I don't like to do it, Brian, but I got to give a little edge to Arrogate with big money Mike Smith as the jockey. I thought you were going to go to the Mike Smith uh, card here, Matt. And Mike Smith certainly is uh, as good as any big race rider in the world. Uh, I think Victor's going to ride a big race in here. Now, Noble Bird for me is a different animal than he is for you. I see Noble Bird as a very good horse when he's not pressured. Um, he has had some bad breaks where he's never got to the lead. Of course, if that happens again, I think he becomes a non-factor in here completely. However, assuming he breaks okay, Noble Bird goes to the lead. I think they have to. I think he's the speed of the speed. 
And for me, it doesn't become a question of they have to deal with Noble Bird. It, it, for me, it becomes a question of when they deal with Noble Bird, because when Noble Bird is pressured by horses like California Chrome and Arrogate, he's going to he's going to fold up his tent a little bit. He's done that time and time again. We've seen it against good horses. So Noble Bird uh, ensures a pace, ensures probably a fast pace here in the Pegasus, which is interesting, which is nice. Uh, I don't think he sticks around even at Gulfstream Park, which generally favors horses who are speed. But he creates that pace that we want to see. And then it becomes who goes first. Uh, past history would say California Chrome goes first. But I think it is a real chess match now between Espinoza and Smith. I think it does boil down to who's the better horse on the day in this one. At least I hope it does. And uh, that's what happens. But it'll be interesting to see if one moves before the other or who's outside who and where they go from there. Now, with all this pace, Matt, I'm looking at horses like Keen Ice, uh, Shaman Ghost, uh, perhaps Breaking Lucky, perhaps Aragon. He's a rallier from Argentina, war story. Um, of the rest, I think the pace helps a lot of them, gives them a better chance to third. What's happened in my eyes here as far as what can happen in this race, the obvious is a California Chrome Arrogate exact the box. But part of me thinks maybe Arrogate missing a race, uh, having a little trouble getting the workouts in in California. Maybe Arrogate's not is the horse that doesn't bring his A game. And then I keep coming to Shaman Ghost for me as the horse that rallies for third as the top two run one, two. Or if one of the top two don't run their best race, maybe Shaman Ghost gets second. What do you think of that, Matt? I, you know, I'm thinking very much in of the same kind of scenario that, for for betting's sake, you can't and and fans, no matter how much you like either one of these horses, you can't bet any, either one of these horses to win if they're going to be down at those kind of odds. Both of them hovering close to even money with the takeout in there. You can't make a win bet. If you want to make one and get a souvenir, then go ahead and do that. But you have to be thinking about other things uh, in terms of wagering. Um, I'm thinking that the exact the box is probably going to be even too low to consider wagering. So are you thinking about a third place horse? Or as you said, Brian, what if one of them doesn't have their A game? Who could that second place horse be? For me, it's the same horse. For me, it's going to be Keen Ice. I'm not a big fan of Shaman Ghost. For me, uh, I think Keen Ice could, uh, with the pace, be the third place finisher. And like you said, Brian, if one of the top two doesn't have their A game, maybe they can fit a second. But betting sake, people have to also keep in mind that there are six other stakes races on the card on Pegasus Day, so no doubt there'll be an all-stakes pick four. We don't know that for sure yet, or I don't know that for sure yet. Maybe even an all-stakes pick five. So uh, fans might want to try and handicap those other ones and just play Chrome and Arrogate uh, in the Pegasus. All right, Matt, before we, uh, before we talk about a few bets that we each will be making, let's run down this field really quick. We did go through California Chrome. By the way, I like the fact that we're on a different winner and we're on a different horse most likely to break into the top three or possibly even the top two. You're on Keen Ice. I'm on Shaman Ghost. But let's run down this field real quick. We'll, we'll skip the top two. We've talked about them ad nauseum already, Matt. So number three in the morning line, Keen Ice. I think Keen Ice is a plotter here. Nine furlongs at Gulfstream is not his best place, is not his best race. I think he probably rallies for fourth or fifth. I think Shaman Ghost is becoming a better horse than him, and I don't like him too much. I'm not going to use him as the third choice. Okay, and, you know, I, I kind of feel the same way uh, as you feel um, uh, about Shaman Ghost. I'm not a big fan I'm not excited about him running at Gulfstream Park. Um, I think Keen Ice is, with his change to the, to the Pletcher Barn, is a horse that may start running a little bit differently because Pletcher has a way of putting a little bit more speed, forwardly placed running style into his horses. So I like Keen Ice a little bit better, not, uh, not Shaman Ghost. Okay, Keen Ice did show more speed last time, and that uh, that allowed him to be absolutely no match for Stanford. 
it, it doesn't uh, invoke confidence from me. Shaman Ghost, on the other hand, is still lightly raced. He's run a lot of good races. He's thrown in a few I didn't like. Shaman Ghost generally has more speed than Keen Ice. I think he's on the improve. I think he'll improve off his third. I like him fourth best. Uh, fifth uh, on the morning line, I had Neolithic Matt. Uh, Neolithic um, was a rallier at Saratoga early in his career last summer. Uh, stalked a uh, stick stately dude in the discovery, ran a good second that day. And then he wired an allowance field at Gulfstream Park. I, I don't think he can possibly wire this field and I don't see him sticking around. Yeah, I agree, Brian. You know, as you described the possible, you know, uh, contentious early race between Neolithic and Noble Bird, I, I don't really see either one of those sticking around also. But, uh, but that factor of ensuring a good solid pace in the race. Next, we have Noble Bird. We've talked about him a little bit, Matt. I expect him to fold up his tent and not to be in the top half of the race at the finish. Yep, can't disagree with that. Breaking Lucky is next. One of the more interesting horses. He reminds me of Shaman Ghost a little bit. In fact, they uh, both won one leg in the Canadian Triple Crown. They've run some good races here. Uh, Breaking Lucky, I think, is a threat to hit the Superfecta. Yeah, I agree, Brian. I think another horse, good quality. Won six hundred thousand dollars in its in its career. Reed Baker is a is a very good, uh, less than uh, high profile trainer. Aragon is next. Matt on the morning line, thirty three to one. We've never seen him run in America. He's he's with the Mackinvale team, who of course gets a lot of ink. They had Run Happy. Uh, Aragon, I think, is one of those horses who a lot of good horses come from South America and do very well in America. Having said that, this is an awfully tough spot for his first race in the States. I think he could run huge, which could get him third, but probably not. Yep. Big question mark. But like you said, Brian, uh, if you look at Aragon's replays, he's made some tremendous closing moves. And if, and if that can translate into this race, there's going to be the pace. I wouldn't be surprised if he could come up and, and get fourth maybe third. So if I'm going to play superfectas or, or trifectas, maybe I'll throw them in. But again, with Chrome and Arrogate lo likely one too, you, you don't want to be making those tickets too big. Fair enough. Okay. Next we have war story, Matt. And I think this horse could be improving. I mean, I, I'm his trip to California where he didn't run at all in the Breeders' Cup Classic. I'm willing to draw a line through that. Maybe he doesn't like that track out at Santa Anita. His Queens County was very good. I'm trying to make excuses here for him. He's probably going to be in the middle of the pack. I thought his cigar mile before the Queens County was decent enough where I could see him hitting the board. But I guess I do like all the horses listed above him on the morning line. Yeah, no question, Brian. And, and, and you have to keep in mind, all of these horses are going to get $250,000 for, uh, for running in this race. And whatever deal the the owners and the and the owner of the spot in the starting gate have ironed out they're probably going to get a pretty good paycheck for a horse like war story maybe they're going to pick up a hundred thousand dollars just for being in the race yeah war story is the last horse on this list where i think he really has a chance to hit the board Rayless coming out of a ninth in the breeders cup turf last year i don't see it prayer for relief should not be in this race he's not won a race matt since 2013 he was 96 to one last time in the Clark and he finished ninth. Don't know why he's in the race other than the $250,000. War Envoy, he's coming out of a sixth place finish last time at Del Mar in an allowance race. Uh, he's got less class than prayer for relief. Yep, no question, Brian. Hope, they'll, they'll hope all those older horses have safe trips. That's right. Good point, Matt. All right, before we go, Matt, let's give out a bet or two. I'll start. I'm going to bet a superfecta in this race. I think it is a very hittable superfecta because of its top heavy nature. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to beat Arrogate just a little bit. So I'm going to put California Chrome singled on top in my superfecta. I'm going to use two horses for second place. That is Arrogate, of course, the second choice. But I'm also going to use my pick, Shaman Ghost, in second. So Arrogate, Shaman Ghost in second. I'm going to bring those two right back in third shaman ghost and arrogate and then for fourth i'm going to throw in a few horses that i think uh, could be picking up the pieces a little bit key nice of course being one of them 
Breaking Lucky, I'm going to use Aragon and War Story. Four horses for fours. Yeah, and, you know, I I probably, as I mentioned earlier, will not be making much, uh, many bets just on the Pegasus. I, I, I don't see it as the kind of race where the, your, your payoff is going to make it worthwhile. Um, I would probably be looking more towards the multi-race wagers, which are uh, also uh, which are a great opportunity to get some some bigger prices uh, in a more likely kind of situation. So my advice is, if you're going to play trifectas and superfectas where the takeout is very high, try and limit the number of combinations that you're going to play because it's only going to cut into the into your payoff. No ticket, Matt. No ticket on this race. Come on, the people want to take it. By the way, my superfecta was only eight combinations, so a fifty cent superfecta costs you a whopping four dollars. I agree with you, Matt. Multi race wagers too will be something that I'm going with this great card at Gulfstream Park. You're going to wait on your ticket. I, you know, if if I'm going to do a trifecta, then I'm going to try and uh, I'm going to try and hit it cold with Arrogate over Chrome over Keen Ice. One, two, three. There you go. I don't know how much that'll pay, Matt, but I yeah. always I wish you good luck. All right, folks. The Pegasus World Cup literally is 10 days from, from happening. The first ever Pegasus World Cup, $12 million, Gulfstream Park. It's it's attracted California Chrome and Arrogate, undoubtedly Amer America's two best male horses, the two best dirt horses in the world. We hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's going to be a good card. We, of course, don't know what the rest of the card is going to be yet, but there's going to be a lot of good stakes 10 days from now at Gulfstream Park. I want to thank you folks for watching. I hope you have a great time watching the Pegasus World Cup on January 28th. Thank you, as always, for watching. Thank you to our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Parting shots from you today, sir. And I, as you, Brian, I'm looking forward to the Pegasus. And, Brian, you're going to be over in uh, London next week. That's right, Matt. I'll be in England uh, next week, London, for the world's best race horse, uh, world's best race award ceremony in London. Uh, California Chrome and Arrogate's connections are going to be there, Matt. Um, interestingly, this will be the second straight year where Americans are on the top of the list of the world's best horses. Five, ten years ago, it looked like there was a trend where European horses especially, but other horses from around the world, we're uh, starting to take our place as the best in the world, but with American Pharaoh, California Chrome, and Arrogate, we've kind of regained that the last two years. So I look forward to being there in London, and that is happening on Tuesday. Sounds great, Brian. Wish I could be there with you. And of course, I want to thank our producer, Brett Workman, and I want to wish Brett lots of luck in the National Handicapping Contest in Las Vegas. Two straight years for a producer, Brett Workman, qualifying for the biggest tournament out there for handicappers. Good luck, Brett Workman. We'll see you next week on Horse Center.